Hi, a very warm welcome back to Soul Growth and today we're talking about spirit guides, who they are, who they aren't, what they do and who has them. Now, I'm aware that there's a great deal of well-meaning but very misleading information around and about, particularly on the internet, but also available in books and online um, to do with spirit guides and who has them and what they are and how many you have. And I've read some very interesting but very misleading information that says people have seven spirit guides or nine spirit guides or you have this spirit guide or this angel or this archangel. And I feel that it's my job as an educator in spiritual matters to actually set the record straight on spirit guides. Now, I understand that what I'm going to discuss here today may tread on people's toes and offend their sensibilities. Now, I apologise if anything that I'm about to say offends you. What I would say is take it in, absorb the information, understand that what I give you here today comes from experience and my own knowledge and learning and let it settle absorb that information and try and take it on board because what because what i'm about to tell you about spirit guides is actual fact um, i feel that a lot of the fluffy misleading information around guides um, perhaps is there to help people to sell online courses or workshops or books etc etc but i don't think it does anybody any favors on their developmental journey to be told absolute fiction over absolute fact. So come with me on this discussion today and let's just delve into the world of spirit guides. Now, I would like to start by saying that only mediums or those on a pathway of mediumship development have spirit guides. And I understand that's going to be a very controversial thing to say to some people because there is this belief out there at the moment and it seems to be a very 21st century, not really based in fact, very fluffy idea. Everybody has a guide. Everybody has this guide and that guide and oh, the whole world is full of guides. It's not true. And here's the reason why. A medium works with the people in the spirit world the unseen world, those discarnate beings who are called dead people, for want of a better phrase. Now, a spirit guide's remit, their job, is to be the liaison between the spirit world and the earthly realm. They help connect the medium on the earth plane with those discarnate beings, those people resident in the spirit realms for the communication of evidence, proof of survival, if you like, to communicate with their loved ones here on the earth plane. That is their job. Now, the only caveat to that I would say is, if you're a healer, you will also work with spirit guides. But that is because as a healer, you're also a medium. Because healing is a facet of physical mediumship. And being so, you will draw to you doctors and specialists in medicine and health from the other side of life who draw close to you when you're giving healing so that you can act as a conduit for that healing energy to flow through to your client. So not everybody needs to have a spirit guide. That's going to be dreadfully unpopular, I understand. But what I would say is, I think that the need for people to believe that they everybody has a spirit guide comes from the real, real hesitancy we have for taking personal responsibility over our own lives. We all need to know that we loved and protected and watched over, and of course we are. But we don't need spirit guides to do that. If it negates us from using the universal spiritual law of personal responsibility, which of course is linked to cause and effect and karma and all other laws. So I would ask you to have a think really about would I need a spirit guide if I wasn't communicating with the next world and bringing through their evidence to 
people here on the earth. Of course, the facts say that no, you wouldn't need that. And you might need to have a little think about what it is in you if you are not a medium or not on a mediumship development pathway that makes you feel that you would need a guide to lean on or to be there for. Does that give you a sense of being able to hand over your troubles to somebody else? Or does it stop you making or hinder you from making proper fact-based decisions for yourself? Have a little think about that and give some thought to it. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about spirit guides. So really mediums and healers being physical mediums are the only people that really need to have spirit guides. So when I hear people saying that everybody has one, I sort of flat out say, no, that's just not the case. Okay, here are some rather um, wonderful myths I've heard about me, um, spirit guides and their role with people, that they come in to keep you on your pathway, to make sure that you don't divert from um, making a decision into another decision, that they, they make sure that you're healthy and they protect you at all times. That's just simply not the case. You've come here to experience the earth plane and a physical existence. And you have also, by doing that, come into a place where there is duality, where there is light and dark and good and bad and health and dis-ease and all the other things to work your way through that. Now, I would say that you are, of course, loved by the other side of life and more still by source itself and that you are watched over by your loved ones in the other world. But they themselves cannot be spirit guides. And here's why. When we pass to the spirit world, we have a lot of progress to make in order to shake off the vestiges, if you like, the attachments to the earthly existence and become pure spirits again. Now, this progress can take an awfully long time to achieve. It's an ongoing process that will take many, 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 well, infinite amount of time, really. And some people believe many incarnations into the earth as well. But spirit people have lives to live in the spirit world. And while your loved ones are always able to be aware of what's going on in your life, simply by tuning into your energy field and your thoughts, they don't need to guide you or send you information in that sense unless they think that it's really really crucial to your your health or your safety so i would say that your loved ones are not going to be spirit guides to you even if you're a medium because they have other things that they need to be getting on with of course they love you of course they want the best for you but that's simply not their job you as a medium are assigned your spirit guides and your spirit team before birth, particularly your main guide, who you will have been drawn together through your affinities and through your desire to serve source, the great spirit. Okay, so we've put that to bed, I hope. And who is the right material for a spirit guide? Now, I know that some people in the past and some people presently have said that they have historical figures as their spirit guides. I would caution here that there could well be a little element of ego involved in that. Um, I would be cautious to sort of fall short of calling it delusional. Though I would really stress that although a lot of shamanic practices and certain forms of um, meditation and inner work, you will come across archetypes, that's gods and goddesses and archetypal energies. I would still say that for most mediums, you will not be working with Napoleon or Cleopatra or the Queen of Sheba, that just isn't something that tends to happen. Great, good luck to, to you if you are, obviously, but I would say for the majority of us, that just isn't the case. Which leads me on to this huge subject of guides that are from the angelic realm. Now, I hear all the time, 
my guide is the archangel dot 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 i work with angel so and so that's lovely great now i do believe that we are able to work with in the energies of these wonderful beings the archangels and the angels and they can provide an awful lot of healing for us on the earth i believe that healers can work particularly well with the angelic energies as well because they are such wonderful pure conduits themselves but are angels and archangels spirit guides the flat out truth is no for a being to be a spirit guide of a medium and those let's say are really the only real spirit guides that we encounter they have to really have had an experience of earthly life put it like this they are working with a person a medium who is now incarnated into physical matter and going through all of the issues and problems that we all face whilst on the earth an angel or archangel simply doesn't have that experience that's not to say i don't believe in them i believe that they are a very very important part of the hierarchy of the spirit world but as they re reside so closely to source the great spirit i just don't believe that they have the right experience then shall we say of the earthly life in order to make it a good connection to work with a medium experience is necessary it's like any job the cv has to say that they have experience in earthly life and angels and archangels simply don't so the next time you think or feel that you're working with an angelic energy that's perfectly legitimate and i would never say that that is wrong i feel that those energies are there to be tapped into and utilized with healing and through mediumistic work but the archangels or angels themselves do not link with mediums specifically to be that medium spirit guide that simply is not the case and i apologize for saying that but it's the simple truth so how many guides do we have who are they what do they do so this myth of seven or nine guides or however many is the popular um, fashionable number at any given time really we have one main guide or control as a medium who works with us throughout the course of our mediumship career but then we have a team of helpers in the spirit world who also form a large group of people spirit people to help us along our pathway they're really there to help us through our development and what you will find as a medium is that certain um, members of that spirit team step forward at certain times along your developmental pathway they're there to help with specific parts of your development and when you have mastered those certain parts of your development you may feel those uh, personalities in spirit stepping back and a new personality stepping forward now you're already connected to that wonderful team of spirit beings there so in a soul sense you are already very well known to them and they are very well known to you your main control is somebody who as i said before has been assigned to you who you've agreed to work with before coming into this present incarnation and you also work with them in your sleep state on your development on the delivery of your mediumship and other aspects of uh, retaining your psychic battery power and and your attunement your connection etc so those are the types of of people you have working with you now the number can be infinite and i always think it's better not to put a number on how many guides you have you might sense five you might sense ten you might sense a hundred it really is inconsequential because all you need to know is that they are there you can trust them and you can work with them now a lot of mediums never know particularly in the early stages of their development who their spirit guides are now there seems to be a cult of spirit guides that's kind of been built up in the last century 
where people become extremely attached and almost obsessive about getting to know who their spirit guide is or spirit guides are, uh, what their personalities are, what life they lived while they were on earth, etc, etc. It almost becomes a guide or idol worship. It's something that I would say to you, I would advise you to avoid if at all possible. It doesn't matter who you're working with. You know that you have the best people working with you at this moment. If you can't identify them, um, really, really sincerely don't make that an issue because what happens with guides is we are all bound by the law of um, attraction, like attracts like, that which is like unto itself is drawn. That's true of everything in this earthly plane. And what that universal spiritual truth tells us is that if we sit around thinking, I wonder if my spirit guide is a Native American man. Well, guess what you're going to get? The spirit world will send you a beautiful Native American man to be your spirit guide. He might not be the guide that is right for you at that moment. But through the law of attraction, there is no other way that that could work. You will end up with what you expect in a sense. It's much like how we co-create our reality in this life. So do be mindful of sending those thoughts out and, and thinking those things and wondering, oh, I wonder if it's so and so. You know, we all have those um, indigenous cultures or historical figures or types of people who we, we really, really hold dear to ourselves and almost idolise. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I would say be careful what you wish for because you'd really rather have the correct spirit guide working with you than um, end up drawing one to you through magnetism because you've sent out that thought. Just let it be. Understand that the right people are there behind the scenes working with you all the time and you're very well taken care of and very well regarded and loved. So I hope that's put to rest some um, queries or questions in your mind about spirit guides. Uh, your guides will stay with you and work with you all throughout your life. As I said, certain team members will move in and out while you're working on different aspects of your mediumship. But unless you're a medium, you really do not need a spirit guide. Now we have this all encompassing term of light workers, which has become very popular um, of late. And I understand that that term sort of is an umbrella term for a lot of wonderful and very positive, um, beautiful people who are absolutely benevolent, benevolent and compassionate and doing a lot of good work in the world at this time. Um, I know that it, it's a sort of non-specific catch-all phrase for people who are interested in spirituality as well. I would, however, say that unless you are walking that pathway of mediumship development or becoming a healer, um, you just simply will not have a spirit guide. You will have people in the spirit world who love you very much, who are uh, members of your family, your loved ones, your friends who have passed over, will keep a watchful eye on you. And they're wonderful, obviously the angelic world um, and those higher beings of light who love and look after all the people of the earth. You are very well guided and guarded. But simply put, only mediums need spirit guides. So I hope this has helped in some way and I hope that I haven't upset too many people by, by what I've said. Um, I would say to remember that, you know, as you walk your path, you're more likely to become um, aware of who you work with. So in the earlier stages of your development, it might be more difficult um, to identify who you uh, have on your team. But this may get easier to um, sort of identify them as you walk forwards and just don't worry or put too much pressure on yourself if at this time you're not sure who that is. Um, 
and just remain mindful of the signals you're sending out to the universe and who you're drawing to you to help you work um, because we always get what we send out it, that's what returns back to us and remember that a spirit guide can also be a group of beings who all come together behind the guise of one figure and this was very much the case um, with the absolutely wonderful the seminal amazing spirit guide of Morris Barbonell who was the founder and editor of Psychic News his um, spirit guide the wonderful Silver Birch said that you know there were thousands of beings behind his personality it was just that they sent him forward to come and do the work whilst it was a, sort of a trickle down effect of information coming from the higher realms and then coming through one personality to their medium and through their medium so remember that you know it may seem like you're only working with one person um, through your mediumship but actually you're connected to a great chain of information and wisdom that goes right back up through the hierarchy so in a way i suppose maybe we are working with angels and archangels although i feel that it's not as direct a connection as some people may believe so if you found this interesting if you found it informative and you'd like to hear more from soul growth please do hit the like and the subscribe button below and i'll see you again soon for more interesting spiritual discussion do take care